I'm Liz Merrick, and I'm gonna show you how to make your own wedding cake. Well, hopefully not your wedding cake, a wedding cake for somebody. <laughs> In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you all of the tools that you need, each step for stacking and getting a beautiful finish, covering in fondant, and of course, putting your wedding cake together. We'll even show you how to put some fresh flowers on there. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over the tools that we need to make your own wedding cake. I have a turntable here and a nice firm cake board. This board is from Cake Boards of Air. It's pre-coated in vinyl so that you don't have to cover it. It's already food safe, it's great. You can also use a cake dummy. Just don't use a really thin cardboard like this. This is not for putting an entire wedding cake on because it will just break in half and then that would be bad. You're going to need a bench scraper. You need some fondant smoothers to get those sharp edges. Cake boards to place underneath your cakes. Cakes always go on top of a cake board before you stack them on top of each other. Otherwise, the whole thing would just collapse in on itself. You're gonna need an offset spatula for putting on your buttercream, an X-Acto blade that's brand new for cutting that fondant super sharp. I'm using milkshake straws to stack my wedding cake, but you could use wooden dowels or plastic dowels, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I have stacked wedding cakes up to five tiers with milkshake straws. They're strong. Scissors for cutting your straws. My secret ingredient a level. Okay, you ready to start making your first cake? Okay, so I have my cakes here that have already been wrapped and chilled. If you're interested in learning more about how to prepare your cakes before decorating, go ahead and watch my how to decorate your first cake video. All right, so I'm gonna place my cake onto my turntable with a little bit of plastic wrap and we're gonna trim the cake, which basically means we're gonna remove all of these brown edges so that it's really pretty when you slice into it. Not a big deal when it's your birthday cake, but a little bit more of a big deal for something like a wedding cake. It just looks cleaner when you cut into it. Not absolutely necessary to tell the truth, I do it. Whether it's a birthday or a wedding or whatever, I just think it looks better. So to trim, I'm just gonna take my knife and just come under that little brown layer. This has been in the freezer for like two hours, so it's slightly frozen, but not frozen solid. It's like you're skinning it. There's more than one way to skin a cake. There's really only just one way. <laughs> so you see that beautiful crumb? And then I'm just gonna come around the edges and cut off the sides. This is the white almond sour cream cake recipe, which is basically a doctored cake mix to make it really easy, but still taste good. Turn it over. Ooh, pretty cake. So I know it might feel like you're wasting a lot of cake, but it's just little scraps, it's not a big deal. So then go ahead and trim all of your cakes the same way. So we're gonna be icing this cake with something called the upside down method. This is not the way that you have to ice your cake if you're making your own wedding cake, but it is the way that I do it and it's how I get super sharp edges every single time really quickly. So it is gonna be different than probably what you're normally used to seeing, but I think it's great. So when I do this, normally I use something called a turntable extender, which fits on top of my turntable and extends it out a few inches so that I can ice really big cakes. You probably don't have a turntable extender. If you want one, you can get one from Innovative Sugar Works. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with just some cake boards and some tape. So I'm gonna take some masking tape, just put it on my turntable here. And you can take like a 12 inch cake board and just place that on top. And then you're gonna take a little bit of vegetable shortening and smear that over the cake board. And then you're gonna take a piece of parchment paper and place that on top. I know you're just like, I have no idea what's happening, but just stay with me. <laughs> okay, and now I'm gonna put some buttercream right in the center. Big, big mound of it. Ideally bigger than whatever size cake you're working with. Ideally about half an inch thick so that you have a little bit of wiggle room, literally. Then you're gonna take your first layer of cake and place it right on top. This is my easy buttercream recipe. 
super, super smooth, not too sweet, perfect wedding cake frosting. We're shooting for about a quarter inch of frosting in between your cake layers. Don't skimp on that. You don't wanna to put too much though because then you could get bulging. Nobody likes bulging. Next layer, and I'm kind of pressing down a little bit just to make sure there's no bubbles. Then put a little bit of buttercream on the very top, which is actually the bottom. Take your cake board, place that on top. Make sure it's centered. Should be a little bit of cake board hanging off all the edges. And then we have our secret weapon here, our level. <sighs> and what you should be able to see is that this is completely straight up and down both, both ways, which it is. So if it wasn't though, you could press on the sides and it smushes down into this layer of frosting that's right here and then you can make sure it's level. And then once that's level, you can put some big layers of buttercream. Really fill it in. Double check that we're still level. Okay, and then we're gonna take our bench scraper and you're going to hold this straight up and down on the side of the cake. Try not to tilt it like this. Now hold it at a 90 degree angle and we're just gonna slowly start scraping away the excess frosting. Wipe off the extra frosting as you go. Notice we didn't have to do a crumb coat. One of the benefits of doing it this way. One of the reasons it's not necessarily beneficial to make your own wedding cake is because you probably don't have all these tools on hand. So to make your wedding cake look as good as the professionals, you might have to invest in things like turntables and bench scrapers and fondant smoothers and offset spatulas. But if you already have those things on hand or if you wanna you know, keep decorating cakes, it might be worth the investment. Since we're covering this cake in fondant, you don't have to worry about any surface imperfections like little holes or bubbles in your fondant. So please don't obsess over that. Once your bench scraper starts hitting this board, you're done. I'm just gonna get that little bit of extra off right there. I'm gonna carefully slide my board straight off, don't bend it. And I'm gonna put this in the freezer for probably about 30 minutes or so. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same process to the eight inch cake. I'm just doing a quick crumb coat on this one since it has chocolate in it to seal in those chocolate crumbs. Cake board. and then place that into the freezer. Okay, so our six inch cake is fresh out of the freezer and we're going to turn our cake right side up. So you put your hand right here. <laughs> you scared? One, two, three. <laughs> I promise it's not that scary. 
The reason this works is because A, your cake is partially frozen. B, uh, your cake is in layers and it's stacked on top of each other and it doesn't matter if it's upside down or right side up. All of the weight and the distribution of weight in a buttercream, it's the same both ways. Does that make sense? Okay. So now you just peel off. Well, that came off together, that's easy. <laughs> peel off the parchment and you peel off the board, you have an extremely flat and smooth service. I do have a few little bubbles in here and I'm just gonna fill those in really quickly with some buttercream. See, those are some super sharp, super clean edges, ready for fondant. So our eight inch cake has been chilled and just like before, we're gonna remove the cake board and the parchment paper. I'm just gonna fill in a couple of the little holes in the top with some extra buttercream. Look at those sharp edges. I love using the upside down method to make sharp edges on my buttercream cakes because it's really fast and you don't spend a lot of time buttercreaming, especially when you're a beginner. 